So in the last session we have uh, discussed about the intensive parameters in thermodynamics especially we have focused on three of the intensive parameters namely uh, the temperature T which we obtained as dou U with respect to dou S keeping the other two variables V and N as constants. The second one was pressure which is equal to again minus dou U with respect to dou V keeping the other two variables namely the entropy and number of variables as constant and we got the third intensity parameter mu equal to dou u with respect to dou n keeping the entropy and volume as constants so these are the three important intensive parameters that we have defined which plays a major role in the uh, thermodynamic equilibrium of a system and in particular um, we can see that the equality of the first intensity parameter namely temperature that is T1 equal to T2 is the condition for thermal equilibrium of a system the equality of the second of intensity parameters that is equality of pressures is the condition for a mechanical equilibrium of the system and the equality of the third intensity parameter namely the chemical potential denotes the condition for chemical equilibrium of the system so you can see the three intensity parameters what we are defined in the energy representation earlier they play a major role in deciding the respective equilibrium of the given thermodynamic system and you know the combination of these three conditions or the combination of these three equilibria corresponds to what is known as the thermodynamic equilibrium of the system so in analyzing whether or not a particular system is in a state of equilibrium these intensity parameters assume relevance that's why we have discussed them and defined them properly in terms of the internal energy of the system now before we move on to uh, uh, a very important uh, equation relation connecting thermodynamic variables the intensity and the extensive variables namely the euler and the gibbs duhem relationships uh, let us uh, see uh, another okay important uh, relationship or the way of writing all these quantities that is uh, you know uh, in the in, uh, internal energy representation we have uh, u you can write u you know this uh, u is a homogeneous function of degree 1 because u is an extensive variable so I can write u as a function of s v and en so what I'm doing is that I'm taking u of lambda s lambda v lambda n let me consider u of let me just make a modification consider u of lambda s lambda v lambda n you know internal energy being an extensive variable it's a homogeneous function of degree one so i can write this is equal to lambda of u s v 
en okay so already we have seen this particular relationship for any extensive variable, variables such a relation will be holding good now if I substitute if I make this lambda lambda if that is made equal to 1 by n you know lambda can be any number so let me assume that lambda is equal to 1 by n then what we get so the RHS of the equation therefore I can say 1 by n 1 by n of u 1 by n of u what I'm writing is the RHS of the equation that is s v and n that will be equal to what will be the LHS then becoming so I can write u this is written u u of we can see uh, this one as uh, u of uh, like here is a capital S by en then here it is v capital v by en and the third one will be en by en that is the lhs i have just uh, interchanged the lhs and rhs for a um, okay, um, convenience now uh, on the right side in the bracket you can see capital s by n so what is meant by capital s by n capital s is the total entropy of the system so capital s by n what is n n is the number of particles in the system so capital s by n we can denote it by small letter s i'm just making it a bit bold to understand it this is known as the entropy per number of particles so we consider this one as entropy density entropy density it's a type of number density entropy density similarly volume per number of particles i'm denoting by small letter v small letter v we call it as the volume density volume density therefore n by n should be equal to 1 so you know okay you need not write the functionality of 1 so uh, this particular thing this particular thing uh, we can now write as this is uh, u I'm using small letter now here u u of small s see that this is small letter you clearly distinguish that one u of small letter s means u of the entropy density and that of the volume density small v. now uh, you know capital u by n should be that then small u okay capital u by n that is what the energy density so this is yet another way of writing this is yet another way of writing the uh, see uh, energy representation in terms of the density so uh, beware of this particular symbols so uh, the entropy per number of particles will be denoted as entropy density and the volume per number of particles will be written as what volume density so clearly you distinguish between uh, the mass density you know mass density is mass per volume here it is named as volume density so here the density in terms of per number of particles of the system now uh, this uh, symbol will be used in discussing the Euler and Gibbs Duhem relationships later. Okay, now let me come to uh, what is known as the uh, Euler relationship uh, in uh, thermodynamics. Uh, see, uh, well, I think I will take a new page. Yeah. Yes, please. So, you know that uh, the internal energy is an extensive parameter. So uh, I think I'll go on writing since u is an extensive parameter okay 
it's it is a homogeneous function mathematically speaking of degree one and hence is additive in nature hence is additive in nature okay you know every extensive property is additive in nature the total value for a composite system will be equal to sum of its values for uh, uh, its uh, parts subsystems okay that is this fact can be written as u what you have just done uh, done right now lambda s i'm using the uh, the energy representation u of svn so u of lambda s lambda v lambda n is equal to lambda times u of svn so let me say that this is my equation number one now you know that lambda can have any values okay so lambda is actually a variable right so what i'm doing is that i'm differentiating both sides of equation number one with respect to lambda Therefore, differentiating both sides with respect to lambda. What would be that? So, uh, you know, here uh, left side is a function of lambda s. Yes, so, I have to do some sort of function of function differentiation. So, it will be dou u do u you know this uh, u is a function of what lambda s yes, i'm writing the function dependence also lambda s yes, lambda v and lambda n i'll first differentiate it with respect to lambda s yes itself because it's directly a function of lambda s yes. so do u by do lambda s yes, do lambda s yes. Okay, when you do this one, of course, you know that you have to keep the other two variables as constant. What is that? Lambda v, so partial derivative lambda v and lambda n are kept as constant, that can be understood, uh, times dou lambda s, dou lambda s with respect to lambda. Okay, this is the function, function rule in differentiation. Plus, you know, you have to take three such terms what will be the next term it will be the same as do u of all those things okay i'm not writing it explicitly here with respect to do of lambda v i'm doing it with respect to the second term do of lambda v times do lambda v with respect to lambda do of lambda v with respect to okay so here of course this is there the other two variables are uh, means lambda s and lambda n are kept constant it is understood right or we can say that uh, no, okay uh, not lambda s v and n are kept constant that's enough okay because uh, lambda is a variable so v uh, s and n are kept constant you get rid of, get rid of that uh, lambda there so do lambda v with respect to what do lambda then plus the third one will be do u of all those functions with respect to do lambda n do of lambda n i'm treating lambda n as a okay single uh, variable uh, keeping you know the other variable. what is that s and uh, v as constants s and v as constants times what do of lambda n with respect to do lambda okay and on the right side you know when you differentiate with respect to lambda this lambda will be gone so on the right side you are left with only u of s v n u of s v n okay so what will be the next thing so you know it is going to be uh, I'm just getting rid of this functional dependence and also I'm writing simply do u with respect to 
do lambda s do u with respect to do lambda s so the same equation i have written here do u with respect to do lambda s into what is do lambda s with respect to do lambda so this one will just give you what simply s yes. so into s yes, into s yes, plus similarly the second term do u with respect to do lambda v do u with respect to do of lambda v i am not writing the constants and all it should be understood okay times what do lambda v with respect to do lambda should be equal to v so that is into v plus the third term this term that will be do u with respect to do lambda n okay and the third one will give you one en right so this term will give you n so that would be equal to simply u of s v en let me call this one as equation number two now you know this lambda is an arbitrary number it's a variable so it can take any value okay so i'm using that freedom here since lambda is arbitrary since lambda is arbitrary let's choose lambda equal to one so in that case what will be the fate of equation number two therefore equation number two becomes simple what is that it is do u with respect to do s i put lambda equal to one you know when you are taking that uh, thing as uh, with respect to yes then other two variables v and n should be kept constant so v comma n constant times s plus second term similarly do u with respect to do v let's bring back those constant so when you take it with respect to v you have to keep s and n as constant so s and n kept constant times uh, it's multiplied with v into v plus third term is do u this is the term i am discussing now do u with respect to do n keeping s and v as constant into multiplied by n that's equal to simply u of svn so see that this is u u of svn so let me say that this is equation number three right but you know that this do u by do s at v n can you tell me what is that one do u by do s at v n partial derivative of two of internal energy with respect to the entropy and let me take you back to our first slide do u by do s see what is that do u by do s at constant v and n that is nothing but temperature by the definition of the intensity parameter in thermodynamics so i can write instead of the do u by do s at v n i can write t then multiplied with this s so it becomes t into s plus similarly i think i understand what will be the second term here do u by do v at s en do u by do v at s en you can see that minus do u by do v at s en is equal to pressure so do u by do v at s n will be equal to minus of pressure okay so i can say instead of this plus let me use uh, a minus so it becomes minus this is p and this is v p v right and automatically you can understand what will be the third one you can presume what will be do u by do n so anyway let's have a look at it do u by do n at s v is nothing but the chemical potential mu so we'll substitute for that mu so mu this is mu so multiplied with n is equal to u right and uh, this equation you can see that's a bit lengthy relationship which connects seven different thermodynamic variables of a system some of which are intensive in nature and the remaining ones are extensive in nature is 
a very important relationship in thermodynamics and this is known as the Euler's equation or Euler equation of thermodynamics Euler equation of thermodynamics so the Euler equation of thermodynamics connects seven different thermodynamic variables of a system the Euler equation connects seven different thermodynamic equations of a system and uh, uh, you can see that uh, see there, there, there is a, if you spend some time on this equation you can see that there, there are some interesting pairing that happens with each of this so you see that the temperature is paired with entropy T into S pressure is paired with volume and uh, chemical potential is paired with a number and you can see that what is the speciality of all this pairing here on the LHS of this equation that the product of temperature with entropy will be having the dimensions of energy U the dimensions of energy you know okay entropy uh, you know that uh, the unit is joule per Kelvin and uh, the uh, temperature is having uh, a unit uh, you know kelvin so kelvin and kelvin get cancelled and you are left with what the joule which is the unit of energy so you already know that from the knowledge basic knowledge of thermodynamics that uh, t and s the product will be having dimensions of energy that is why we have been using ts diagrams okay in uh, carnot engine and all you have seen ts diagrams like we have been drawing pv diagram as one of the indicator diagram in place of the PV diagram, we equivalently use the TS diagram to derive the efficiency of heat engines. The one the, such reason is that okay, the, the area under can give you the dimension of energy. So T and S are suitable combinations. They are the conjugate variables. I can just mention in terms of thermodynamics. The conjugate variable of temperature is entropy. The, so is the case with the pressure and the volume. Okay, you know the product of pressure with the volume will also give you uh, the dimensions of energies and so you can very well understand that uh, uh, the product of uh, mu and en also will give you the dimension of energy. So it gives you why I discuss it this way because it will give you an idea about what physical quantity is this chemical potential mu. So if the product of mu with en can give you energy then mu should represent some energy per number mu represents energy per number okay energy per number so that is another way of understanding chemical potential so i had already made it clear that uh, uh, chemical potential is the free energy per okay can be defined as the free energy per number of particles or it is the energy required to remove a particle from a collection of particles that's why it is known as chemical potential that's why it is related to the thermal equilibrium so uh, during chemical sorry not thermal equilibrium, chemical equilibrium during chemical reactions new uh, products will be formed okay or uh, some products uh, some reactants will be uh, just getting uh, avoided so uh, in that case uh, when whenever a new uh, member is added okay uh, there will be some energy cost for that so it represents the amount of energy that is liberated or it is uh, absorbed okay uh, when uh, to, uh, some new member of particles is added or removed from the system we'll see more about that one in the coming okay discussions okay. so this is the Euler relationship of the modernamics now let me before we move on to the gibbs duhem relationship a connected relationship let me tell you about what is the physical relevance of this equation Okay, so we call it this equation number three, uh, sorry, equation number four. What is the physical relevance of Euler equation? Yeah, the Euler equation is with this the thermodynamic variables in a Tamil Bendipik in equation number two. And that is the physical relation. The physical, uh, okay, uh, the physical importance can be understood like this. So, uh, the Euler equation represents a thermodynamic constraint. The Euler relation represents a thermodynamic constraint. Uh, see Euler equation I'm writing EE for the time being represents it represents a thermodynamic constraint a th what is my thermodynamic constraint means a limitation 
constraint uh, between the intensity variables p t and between between the intensity variables intensive variables p t and mu okay that is they cannot change in any fashion pressure temperature chemical potential um independent aayittu engenengilo ongu vary cheyan pattilla there should be some sort of a rhythm that is any change taking place among them must satisfy any change uh, taking place among them must satisfy some relation and that relation is what we are going to see next we will call that relation as the gibbs duhem relationship okay ivar onnu independent alla ഇവരെല്ലാം ഈ ഏഴ് പേരും അന്യോന്യം ബന്ധപ്പെട്ടാണ് ഇരിക്കുന്നത് എന്ന് നമ്മൾ ഇക്വേഷൻ ഓയിൽ ഇക്വേഷനിലാണ് കണ്ടു ഇനി അവർ ഇൻഡിപെൻഡൻ്റ് അല്ല എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ അതിൻ്റെ അർത്ഥം എന്താണ് അവരിടയ്ക്ക് ചില കൺസ്ട്രെയിൻസ് എക്സിസ്റ്റ് ചെയ്യുന്നുണ്ട് ഓക്കെ അവർക്ക് ഇഷ്ടമുള്ള വാല്യൂസ് എടുക്കാൻ പറ്റില്ല ഒന്നിലുണ്ടാവുന്ന ചേഞ്ച് മറ്റുള്ള മറ്റ് വേരിയബിൾസിലുണ്ടാവുന്ന ചേഞ്ചുമായിട്ട് നേരിട്ട് ബന്ധപ്പെട്ടിരിക്കും അപ്പോൾ അത് മനസ്സിലാക്കാൻ വേണ്ടിയിട്ടാണ് നമ്മൾ അടുത്ത ഇക്വേഷൻ ഡിസ്കസ് ചെയ്യുക ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് നോൺ ഓസ് ദ ഗിബ്സ് ദുഹെം റിലേഷൻഷിപ്പ് സോ ലമി കം ടു ദ ഗിബ്സ് ദുഹെം റിലേഷൻഷിപ്പ് so it is quite easy once you have this one now we have uh, okay uh, that uh, euler equation so i am rewriting the euler equation here i think it is by the time you are uh, you are able to understand the euler equation the euler equation euler equation is i am writing u equal to i am just changing the lhs and u is equal to so you know it is quite easy now ts minus pv plus mu1 that is my euler equation which i think we have named it as equation number four or something like that i'm rewriting it so let me take uh, the differential of this equation so taking differentials taking differentials means we are considering as an infinitesimal change in uh, the internal energy uh, taking differentials what will it become it will become du equal to so you have to take d of uh differential of each term on the right side so it will become i have to use the product rule so it will be tds plus sdt then the second time will be minus pdv minus vdp right then the third one will be plus mu dn plus n d mu that will be the okay our equation on the other side right so now let me call this one as some equation number five or something like that right now you have the first law of thermodynamics so from first law of thermodynamics from first law of thermodynamics what do you have can you write it as du equal to that is a very familiar equation for you du equal to we have seen that that is tds for an open system minus pdv plus mu dn okay so that's my equation number six already i have seen now just compare equation number 5 and 6 you know the lhs are one and the same so should be the rhs so you can see tds is here tds here minus pdv is here minus pdv is here and mu dn is here mu dn is here so du should be equal to these things so what does it mean it means that the rest of the terms should add up to give you zero okay so 5 and 6 okay comparing 5 and 6 we get one idea that is what the rest of the terms i'll be uh, pick up the rest of the terms that is sdt sdt minus vdp minus vdp th those terms which i have already circled plus n d mu you know these all terms should add up to give you zero okay so let me uh, call this one as equation number 7 let me put it in a uh, an uh, okay uh, in uh, another way so let me take or or uh, better i'll write as n d mu is equal to i'm taking retaining this term on the lhs and taking the other two terms as, uh, to the other side so it will be equal to simply v d p v d p minus s d t minus s d t so therefore d mu equal to i'm writing d mu that is a change in infinitesimal change in the chemical potential so i can take n to the other side so what it will become it will become simply v by n into dp minus so in minus uh, take it as a minus right let me just erase it yeah so it is into dp minus capital s by capital n 
into dt and i think you know what to do next so that is d mu is equal to what is capital v by n from our previous discussion on the slide we have seen v by n we have defined a small letter v that is known as the volume density that is the volume density okay that is i can write small letter v dp minus so what is capital s by capital n number of sorry entropy per number of particle okay that is uh, you can see small yes we are written that is small yes that is what entropy density so i am using here small yes i am making it a bold to show that it is a density sdt now you have got a very cute equation very brief one this particular equation which connects so see that you see the relevant which connects the infinitesimal changes happening in the intensity parameters mu p and t to the corresponding densities is what is known as the famous gibbs duhem relationship gibbs duhem relationship so this equation it's written in terms of the densities okay it connects what is what actually is physically uh, uh, this gibbs duhem relationship uh, does you know the euler relationship what we have represented by equation number 4 simply connects the seven thermodynamic variables of a system some of which are extensive and some of which are what intensive and an alteration an alteration another form of this uh, euler equation what is known as gibbs duhem relationship which is uh, connecting the changes in the intensity parameters mu p and t of a thermodynamic system so you can see that uh, what all terms are coming d mu is there in gibbs duhem dp is there in gibbs duhem and uh, dt is also there in gibbs duhem and you will see that uh, the changes happening in the chemical potential that of the pressure and the temperature of a given system they are not independent that's why i told you that the euler equation and the gibbs duhem relationship gibbs duhem relationship that represents the thermodynamic constraint that exists between the intensity variables p t and mu okay and the p kim t kim mu no onnum endana sodandramayittu maaran pattilla any change taking place among them must satisfy the gibbs duhem relationship any change and so what is the use of this gibbs duhem relationship the change in one of them can be calculated as a function of the change in other two the chemical potential your process is the chemical potential and down the change in a number can be a bottom pressure and down the change in the in temperature and down the change in the in terms in the number can be done okay or also gives the him relationship is used as a tool for checking the thermodynamic consistency of experimental data that's another thing i have to put it okay it's what's the use of this gives the him relationship first one i told you uh, change happening in any one of the intensity parameter can be calculated in terms of the change in other two. Second one is that it is used for used for checking the thermodynamic consistency consistency of experimental data. What is the meaning? You are doing a thermodynamic experiment. You get some results. In a kitty result. Uh, okay, uh, theoretically correct on the check here. I made it to the You can put up uh, that uh, result uh, in uh, the Gibbs to him relationship. A uh, Gibbs to him relationship will not get the result to uh, verified on an angle. We can see that our result is believable. You can believe that result. So that's uh, regarding what is known as the Euler and Gibbs to him relationship. So remember, these two are two very fundamental relations of uh, uh, thermodynamics. Uh, and uh, we we are not usually discussing these uh, relationships in our undergraduate thermodynamic course but see that they are relevant we will be using these uh, equations uh, repeatedly in our discussion of statistical mechanics so hope that it's quite easy uh, okay you can understand it okay so uh, in the next uh, session i think we'll be going back to thermodynamic potentials and how uh, thermodynamic potentials are related to uh, the uh, what you call the process of legendary transformation okay thank you